Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and joining with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. How you doing? Hey, not too bad. How are you? I'm good. Good. Not too, too bad. Haven't I already seen you this week on this this platform? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this it's just for one special this week. <laughs> That's right. As I previously mentioned, if you guys missed the last episode, that one came out late. So uh, definitely go back and check that out in the feed, guys. That was a really good episode. It was honestly one of the best week of comics I think we've had in some time. And then we got this week. This week we're talking about August 30th, 2023. Uh, this week's new releases of comics that came out. Ah, there's some good stuff still amongst all this. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We're not going to, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to tank the episode already with our negativity. <laughs> but uh, five this week. What? No, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's not a bad, it's, it's a bad week though. There's no fives. It's very rare. You've given out a five. Let's remember that. Yeah, guys, there's a little teaser. If you want to see Chris give out his third five ever on this show, definitely go back and check out the last episode. That was a good one. Uh, but yeah, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If this is your first time checking this out. You know, we're on the road to 100 of these episodes here. You can go back and check out any of them in the playlist. And uh, always a lot of fun. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We once upon a time did put out other videos on this uh, late night collectors community as well. Uh, I think you will start to see some of those coming up. I think they're, you know, we also do crack and packs with the chat. Another show that we do here where uh, we open up collectible cards and stuff like that. Um, you, you might be seeing a couple of those moving into, you know, the hockey's coming back soon. And uh, also, uh, there's a new Pokemon set that we're really interested in. So definitely go check those out in our playlist as well, guys. I think we've done over like 60 episodes of those as well. And, uh, and then also, you know, once in a while you get a trade talk out of us as well, where we kind of talk about a collected edition, uh, comic book, something that's uh, been collected in a hardcover or paperback or something of that sort, where we kind of do more of a deep dive conversation on it. Me and Chris actually reviewed the first two volumes of the walking dead a little while ago. And that was a lot of fun too. So go check that out. But uh, spoiler warning, just be forewarned, we are going to get into what happened in the comic books this week and uh, show off some art and possibly some spoilers as we talk about what happened in them. So just be forewarned, if you're afraid to get spoiled, just read your books and then come back and check us out later. All right, Chris. All right. Cheers. Let's talk comics. Cheers. All right. Let's talk some comics. All right. What do we got first up on the docket here today? We got... Marvel Age 1000. Which cover did you go with there, Chris? Let's take a look. one of the BA cover. Okay, yeah, that's a nice one, yeah. Uh, I went with uh, this one here. I don't know which one this is, but... Oh, nice. Yeah, I like this one as well. But there was like a thousand covers for this one, guys. Yeah. So yeah, a lot, a lot to choose. Wasn't this like a 10-buck comic, too, or something? What's that? Wasn't this like a $10 comic, too? It was, yeah. This is an expensive one, yeah. Ten dollars, yeah. Ten dollar price tag. And uh, you know, if anybody remembers, Marvel Age actually used to be a a book for Marvel in the past that was actually more of like, if anything, a promotional tool to talk about like uh, upcoming books that were going to come out. And it was like really cheap, and it was something. But there's a lot of great stuff in those Marvel Age issues. If you guys ever come across those in the in the quarter bin or dollar bin, whatever you guys got there, some of them are worth checking out because there's like some interviews sometimes with creators. And uh, sometimes they get like they've been considered as first appearances of characters and stuff like that. I know the black suit Spider-Man is part of all, all, all that whole thing. I think it was the Marvel Age issue. It was one. It was in an issue like I think it was in like a previews of some sort. And some people consider that the first appearance because they showed like the black suit Spider-Man in it before the actual issue came out. If it's not Marvel Age, excuse, uh, like uh, you know, uh, excuse my uh, my mistake there, but. It was a good it was a good thing kind of just to give you previews of stuff like coming out from Marvel that they used to do back in the day. I don't know why they called it this for this anthology issue that they put out here, but here we are, right? So I don't know, Chris. What'd you think of this overall? I thought they all they're all feel good stories, nothing big in there, some decent artists. But uh I don't think it's worth the 10 bucks. And you know, none of the stories were super memorable. You know, I think that a Spider-Man story there was some decent artist on it then. Yeah, you know, I'll just feel good stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, like most anthologies, this was a mixed bag, but I felt like it, it like is, you know, usually in anthologies, if I feel like you're getting around 70 percent, 75 percent around that area of the stories are pretty good and art is good, then it's worth picking up. And to Chris's point, I thought this was kind of just like 50 50 and and for a ten dollar price tag, you'd be better off maybe just picking up a couple of 
of issues of a good series. Honestly, I agree with you on that one, Chris, because this was it was okay. It was a bit of a letdown. This first Human Torch, like the old Human Torch uh, story here, um, this was not good. I didn't yeah. like one. This one was the one you're referring to with Ryan Stegman uh, drawing and writing it. Of course, that's always worth the price of admission. So I was yeah. really happy to see. I was I was happy to see him kind of writing and drawing his own Spider-Man story, and he you know looked great. Of course, uh, you know he's an artist we enjoy here, so that was really good. Um, yeah, you know, and it was kind of rang true to the character. He's late once again, but all he had all his family and friends there by the end of it. This was not good. This was okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. There's some wacky panels in this one, but. Yeah, yeah, this was okay. This was like a Jean Grey story about her love with him, her and uh, Scott uh, Summers back in the, like, the original X-Men days, I guess. It was all right. I don't know. I wouldn't say it wasn't good. This was this was fun. I liked this. This was Dan Slott and Mike Allred, who I'm a huge fan of on art. Um, this was uh, uh, like original uh, Captain Marvel story, uh, which was a lot of fun. He kind of by the end of it, he it was about him, like him coming to Earth and basically trying to infiltrate the humans uh, in our race. And by the end of it, he learned to love us through the sound of uh, for the, through the Beatles and other types of bands. I guess that he heard for the first time, like uh, I guess he heard music like for the first time and was like, "Oh, these humans aren't so bad," you know. What I, mean? <laughs> I, I, I kind of liked it though. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it kind of had like a more like a throwbacky feel to it. Like Chris is uh, sh not, sh shaking of his head. I, I don't think he did. <laughs> not, not the greatest story. This wasn't that great either. I felt the Daredevil art was good, but the story was, I think, lacking. I don't know. Uh, this was sick. This was really good. Like again, not so much to speak of in the story, but the art. Steve McNiven kind of did like a Mobius kind of style here. This was really good looking, this story. I was happy to have this. I don't know about you, Chris, but I thought the Silver Surfer one looked really good. But again, not, not much to speak of in terms of story in this one. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, just kind of facing off. Or not even facing off, just uh, debating with this still the whole time, pretty much. But like Mobius, uh, French artist there, uh, he kind of did a like from uh, he did a Silver Surfer uh, story with Stan Lee back in the day, Parable. And I, I'm pretty certain that's what he was going for in this, because this is unlike Steve McNiven's usually usual style. You can see him somewhere, some, uh, you know, sometimes in this art. But for the most part, I feel like this wasn't like him. So I think that's what he was going for here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was good. This is the Jason Aaron Thor story at the end, which uh, he revisited. Um, um, what's the Lady Thor? Uh, what's her name there? Um, basically, Jane Foster Thor that he had a run on. And, uh, and Pepe Larraz on art. It was a fucking beast. Pepe Larraz, yeah. we talked about recently on um, Big Game last week actually uh, that we just talked about. And uh, he killed this as well. He, his art is great. Probably one of my favorite artists this year, honestly. He's he's just really, really he's putting out really, really good work. Um, but yeah, this was an alright story. Uh, but again, yeah. and then yeah, this one, which was whatever. I think Carrie Andrews wrote did he drew this one? I think I think he drew it. Again, the art was good, but the story was whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the one with the kids there, uh kind of creating Marvel there. That was a little homage. I thought, yeah, I thought that story was okay. It was a little touching, let's say. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, again, for a $10 anthology issue, I mean, you got you had some good art in it, but I don't think that many of the stories were very memorable. So uh, if you can come across the issue and just kind of want to look at some of the art that we mentioned in these stories, I think that's good enough instead of picking it up quite frankly. Yeah, this, this comic should have been two bucks. And, you know, just <laughs> celebrated Marvel. Hey, you know, give us a break for supporting you, not freaking try and soak us for, uh, you know, going yeah. out after this, you know. Not, that's not the Marvel way. <laughs> no, it the hose us. <laughs> All right, what'd you give this then out of five? 3.5, let like I say. I was going to give it a three, but there were some good stories in there, some good art that... Uh... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with the 3.5 on this one, but again, that's, you know, it's a, a very mixed bag of, uh, of stories in this anthology uh next up we got batman catwoman the gotham war number one got my issue here bring the art up here I don't buy this one i'm just uh 
I'll follow it through, I guess, Batman and through Catwoman, but I don't think I'm falling for the, the Alpha and the Omega this time around. What do you think of this? I thought it's okay. I'm still, it's still got the stink of night terrors on it with Batman falling asleep for eight weeks or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and then I guess this new, uh, this new reality that he wakes up to in Gotham. I'm not uh, not too sure about that, but I think the story might have some legs to it, and uh, we'll see where it goes. You know, this is one of those cases where uh, two things. One, I'm with you with the Alpha and Omegas usually being bullshit. I think this is worth picking up. Uh, honestly, I thought this was actually one of the better things that's a set up for a crossover that I've read in some time. And uh, not only that, I I um, I thought this was. This was really good. I I it, it, it I didn't like it at first going into it. Like I don't think it was that great. It was kind of a bit of a slow start. I guess it's kind of bringing up to us up to speed as it should for this event. Kind of what's been going on lately. Like you said, the stink of night <laughs> night terror. I was like, oh no, <laughs> why are they talking about this? <laughs> um, but by the end of it, I thought it really was. It was actually really good because it posed a lot of questions. I think like I really liked the whole idea that it kind of threw out there about like. Is this way that Catwoman's doing things actually even because even though it's effective, is it right or wrong? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it's 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 I, I quite like that. It actually for a crossover event between these two characters that used to be together. And like I actually think it what it posed a really interesting question. And of course, you know, everyone's picking their sides and everything. And of course, you got Red Hood, who's kind of like an anti-hero type guy, anyways, who's gonna go on her side of things because he's not afraid of doing things outside of the box uh you know what i mean like uh, a little bit but yeah i i, I like this man i thought I, I, I'm, re I'm interested to see what happens next this could all go to shit within this crossover for all i know but i think for zadarsky and uh is it teeny howard that's the writer of catwoman i think, I think it is, yeah yeah kind of coming together and putting this uh this alpha issue out to set this up i think i think it was successful had some good art in it yeah, I enjoyed it by the end of it. I wasn't sure at the start because, like you said, the night's night's terror shit and all that other stuff. But, but by the end of it, I was like, yeah, you know what? This is actually an interesting premise. I think going into this event and uh, this crossover, I'm looking forward to it. I love the inclusion of the Riddler. Who well, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of. Yeah, I like the Riddler. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. And by the end of it, essentially, Catwoman is trying to train people to rob from the rich, so then they don't need to go out of their way to commit like horrible crimes and do this kind of stuff and just uh, steal from people that can afford it essentially in order to feed their families and all this kind of stuff. And because she's a master thief, she's able to like teach them. And Batman says, no, the fact that you were a lot, we're supposed to like turn a blind eye to crime in Gotham because of what you're doing. doesn't make any fucking sense. It's wrong. And I'm not going to like stand here and like, you know, be a party to it. And, uh, and she, and meanwhile, like crime is like at an all time low in Gotham because it's like, obviously the continuous cycle that Batman, when he puts criminals in jail, that just come back out and do the same shit because they can't find a job and they have to work for fucking henchmen as a result. Like that's basically, you know, it just keeps going on and on. Right. And, and by the end of this, one of the people that she's trying to train as a thief who I guess is, wasn't that wasn't very good or not getting it as good as the other people ended up getting himself killed. And Batman found him uh, at the, at the scene of the crime here and he's just like yeah see this is exactly why we can't we can't fucking allow this shit to go on right so it's yeah it's very interesting i i do like it i i do like the uh the uh, the setup of it so i guess we'll see where it goes so what do yeah, you think? I, I don't know i don't buy it you don't buy it okay i don't buy the henchman stuff you know all of a sudden become elite criminals these are henchmen for a reason because they're dummies but anyways <laughs> what'd you give this I'll give it a 3.5 to we'll see where it goes. I'll give it a solid four. I thought it was decent. So uh, next up we got, uh, let's see here. Arcade Kings number four. I don't have any of the preview art for this one, but uh, this is a four of five. These have been oversized issues. I think they're been like six bucks. Um, no, sorry. Eight bucks, but they're like, yeah, I think they're almost this, almost like three issues the size of the three regular issues. I think it's like 48 pages or something. Um, yeah, I'm really liking this mini series in this one. We finally, uh, get the, basically between the two, well, between the main character that we've been following this, this whole time, he finally catches up and is able to confront his brother, uh, about what happened in their past. And, you know, the fact that 
he they were both kind of being trained as fighters but his brother his younger brother was being trained as the one that basically got the shit beaten out of him constantly by his brother that was being trained by this bad guy like he kind of just used him as a sparring partner constantly throughout their childhood and it kind of caused i guess a lot of you know um trauma for them as kids and there was a whole time where they tried to escape like he they tried to escape this this guy who basically um not really their legitimate father but kind of was like a father figure but just like i said just was like a like a fighting them all the time and trying to train them to be like these crazy ass fighters he he ended up like escaping uh like running away from home and the other brother was supposed to meet up with him and go with him like they agreed to to run off together and for whatever reason, he got pulled back into the, into the the life and 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 kind of pulled back by this guy. And his brother ran off and has never seen him for all these years. I guess since they were kids. So this is kind of like um, you know them reuniting and kind of like talking all this out. You see some flashbacks about this kind of stuff, and and uh, you know he's trying to tell him like you know listen, I, I forgive me. Like I made a mistake. Like I should have went with you. That guy's a piece of shit, all this stuff. And by the end of this, the brother basically doesn't want anything to do with him. And so then he, he leaves, he leaves him. And, and then the, the, the guy who came looking for him, he gets caught by the guy, um, the, by his father essentially. And he, he ends up sucking all his like energy, like all his power out of him. Like he, he's on his deathbed and, and they, they strap him up to like this machine and he ends up taking all his like fighting prowess, like, I guess, like uh, energy and stuff like that, that he has like into, into him. And now he's like, he turns into this like, big juice bag, like a uh, demon fighter guy at the end. Who's like <laughs> re-energized as a result of taking all this kid's uh, power that, that he trained him with or something like, again, if you're into video games, if you're into like, even like eighties, like kind of like, karate kid type shit like that like this kind of like rings true of that kind of stuff like uh like uh you know old school fighting movies and like uh uh video games and like street fighter and shit like that like in, in anime if you're in an anime like i i think this has a, like a lot of themes that this guy's really into that he's kind of putting into this story and i really like his art and it's been a really fun ride so far there's only one more issue in this initial mini series. I'm pretty certain he's going to continue doing more after this, though. I don't think there's any way they could wrap up the story in one more oversized issue. Maybe like this chapter, but I think there's going to be more in the way that it's been going on. So uh, we'll see. But I've really been enjoying this, and I hope it's finding its audience. Um, Dylan Burnett is the writer or artist of this. I'm a big fan of. So I gave this a, I don't know, 4.25 this week. Uh, Black Hammer, the end, number one. This is the return of uh, Black Hammer by Jeff Lemire. I think it's been off for, I think uh, he's been away from the series for like a year. And this is supposed to be the uh, last issue, I think, of this, uh, of, of uh, sorry, last mini series of his Black Hammer stuff at Dark Horse, because I think he's image exclusive now. So where he goes with this after, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, this was all right. The only problem I had with this is I think it's been like a year since Black Hammer, like the last mini series came out. And I, this is kind of revisiting a lot of like what had happened before. And now we're also like, there's been a time jump involved. I think with these characters for a while, he was telling the stories of a bunch of these Black Hammer heroes that we got introduced to in the main series and mini series, like their own mini series. And now they've all kind of came together for like one of these like big cataclysmic kind of endings to his like story. But like the through line, I've lost a little bit of what exactly has been going on with some of these people in this book because it's taken so long for them to kind of all come back together in this series. So uh, it took me a little while getting into the issue, but by the, you know, there were certain points of the issue where things were brought up. I was like, oh yeah, okay, that's right. That happened. And then, you know, I forgot about this. So by the end of it, I think I was on board, but going into it, I was a little, I was a little uh, confused. You know, I wasn't 100% sure of what of everything going on or, you know, this current status quo of everybody. So, you know, it kind of did uh, stifle my enjoyment of this a little bit. But I got to say, uh, it was an all right issue. I, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to what happens next. I think this is going to be like a seven or eight issue miniseries. Basically, her like an alternate version of Black Black Hammer's daughter. The original Black Hammer's dead. Black Hammer's daughter. There's another version of her father from an alternate universe that basically is evil that is now coming uh, and assisting in order to take out their their timeline. Basically, it's like some infinite crisis type shit. So 
uh sorry not infinite he made the same thing said <laughs> crisis on infinite earth yeah i said the same shit you said earlier <laughs> but it's 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 you know so it's there's a definitely a multiversal aspect to this there's definitely a nod towards a lot of like superhero tropes and characters that jeff lemire was a fan of from other stuff mostly dc i would say um you know which is what made black hammer i think successful in the first uh place but i gave us a 3.5 out of 5 this issue so i'm looking forward to more we'll see how it ends all right chris finally after two months night terror is night's end number one what do you have to say about the 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 conclusion of this masterpiece <laughs> well i was so jazzed to read this one i couldn't wait till i got my hands on it i forgot it was even out i think i just saw it online there so i forgot i had to read it because i read everything else i still don't know what's going on i don't know what happened in the last one i don't know why dead man's dead that's a nice looking comic uh I don't know how they beat them, and I don't know. That's it. I just, I don't know. You know, the, the, the big takeaway from this one is Batman falls asleep at the end because he's tired. <laughs> much, like, much like all of us readers after reading Night Terror. I think I'm going to go to sleep for eight weeks, too. <laughs> Yeah, well, well put. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, I don't know. We, we like, like Chris said, we, at the end of this, dead man looks like he's being moved off the 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 board for a little while who knows what's going on with him like whether or not he's gonna come back but uh but it looks like dead man somehow is even deader than he would normally is. <laughs> he gets taken out of this and uh yeah i'm just ready to move on from this but although they kind of by at the end of this, they already have folded the events of this event into the next thing. <laughs> I forgot what they mentioned, but they basically oh. said, Yeah, like, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, the Beast Wars or whatever, the Amanda Waller stuff. Yeah, for of course, because one event has to fold into the next one with DC. Of course. It, yeah, they can't have one a month off without an event, never ending fucking cycle of events. Um, there's two more in the next event, too, just uh, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> there's two artifacts i think that were uh um they had they got a hold of by the end of this this thing and apparently that makes up somebody who is now dr hate now we don't know who this character is exactly yet obviously it's a play on dr fate but it's an evil dr fate <laughs> and it says look look for this in <laughs> fucking beast world coming soon and we're like oh great <laughs> and it's like freaking what in a couple months not even yeah yeah it so, was in our solicitations last week. Or the, uh, what'd you give this? Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'd like to give them more because there's some decent art. And I think they wasted some decent artists for uh, baloney stories. I, I think we went from 3.5s to 3.25s to 3s in our Night Terrors 3. Right? Well, good thing it didn't last for another month because I'd be dropping down at 2.5 and 2s. All right, next up, we got uh, Classified. Oh, sorry, I mean, Ms. Marvel, the new mutant. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got hosed by this, too. <laughs> I bought this uh, under Classified on a super secret uh, solicitation. We can't tell. You could have told me about this three months ago, and I wouldn't have bought it. Uh, yeah, and it starts out brutal. Another uh, dream sequence, which I'm so fond of now. I hate dream sequences. And this dream sequence went on way too long. You know, finally, once you get out of it, at least the art is decent. I think this is that uh, Carlos Gomez guy, if I'm not, uh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, I'm a, a bit of a fan of his, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the story kind of grew on me. You know, I don't know much about Miss Marvel. I don't think she's a bad character. I don't think anything necessarily is bad. I like the little twist there when the, the Chitari looks like it's attacking. But, you know, once he kind of gets involved or, you know, once he goes to battle that Jatari, you can see that he's all, you know, he's been tested on because they're, they're in that Orcus slab. That's another twist to the story. I'm not quite getting, you know, how Orcus is, like, pretty much permeated the, you know, the way of life, I guess, in, in New York. Because now they're, they're owning that uh, ESU, the Empire State University. Yeah. And, you know, the nice throw in with uh, the X-Men stuff there. So the story did kind of grow on me, you know, and uh, I think the art's good here. And hopefully, you know, you get a bit more involvement in the X of the X Men in this in this uh, story, and we'll see where it goes. You know, I'm I'm not big on the the idea of her being a spy to go see what's going on in this 
you know, Orca summer program or something. But this stuff here with her and her friend, you know, it's all fun stuff for a comic. Yeah, I didn't think this was bad, actually. Yeah, I mean, I read this digitally. I didn't pick this up. I didn't buy into the classified, uh, but I... I I, I didn't think this was bad. Like I was a fan of the original Ms. Marvel series. Um, I'm glad that they're finding new ways to push her for story forward in terms of uh, her, her as a character. I, I know that, you know, after her show and then after the thing that she's going to be the new Ms., uh, Marvel's movie, uh, you know, I'm happy about it. I do like the character and, uh, you know, um, I do like that she's now an X Men. Actually, like I, I mean, I, I think it's a stupid thing that they originally should have just fucking made her an X Men, and because of the fact that at the time they were trying to push the Inhumans, they made her an Inhuman instead. And this is almost like them trying to basically, uh, you know, um, <laughs> basically fix the mistake that they made in the first place. But they're also doing they're having their cake and eating it too in a way by. Yeah. Being- so she's an inhuman and she's an X Men. Like it's she, almost good they did something like that. Puts a little wrinkle in her character, you know, that nobody else has. Like if she was just an X Men, she'd just be you know another run of the mill, right. sort of you know another mutant out there. But now oh she's a mutant and uh, you know and an inhuman that nobody cares about anymore. But who right. knows? That can play into something down the road. Yeah, exactly. And like and I, and I get it. Like it's kind of annoying in the sense like we know why they made these decisions and we know why they're doing them. Like obviously. But at the same time, it's not uh, like I, I do. I do enjoy the fact that they're they're trying to course correct with this character. And like you said, like it is interesting. Like it's not the worst thing in the world. We've seen worse. Like I think this yeah. this is this is not a, as bad in the grand scheme of things. Them kind of acknowledging that she can. Oh be- yeah, they could have just slapped Miss Marvel on just some you know garbage and just put it out there just because the movie's coming out and. You know, hopefully they think, oh, the movie's coming. People are going to buy the comic just because. Yeah. At least you got a quality comic, you know, it, even it, though they're trying to align things with the MCU, which right. you know, I'm a big fan of. Right. And like, I, you know, and, and I think that you, if you read this book and you know the character, like there's still all traces of, of this character, how she was before, are still here. Like the thing with all of her family, like she's close with her family. The thing about her having a crush on her friend here that helps her out with and stuff. Like, you know, I mean, there's still kind of like a like a thing going on between them. Like, so like, there's no aspect of the character other than the fact like, Hey, I'm also a mutant now. That's kind of, if, if anything, it's actually providing more story options for the character moving forward, uh, opening up more doors that weren't there before, but making her just an inhuman, honestly. Um, yeah. So that, that's, I'm excited. You know, I, I, this wasn't bad. This wasn't bad. Actually. I, I think it could have been a lot worse. I didn't love the whole thing about killing her off, but thank God. Yeah, that- I still don't know why they have to do that. No, and, you know, now they got to explain it every time, you know, even in the beginning of this comic, they're expl- she's explaining to her friend that, you know, hey, I was dead, but, you know, everybody's mind wiped. Like, if you could do that, there's so much, you know, Emma Frost could be doing to make things different in the world if she had a power to, like, you know, if that, if that was her power to do things, you know, why don't you just freaking mind wipe all of Orcus right now? Mm-hmm. Problem solved. And, you know, everybody's happy in, in Krakoa, but, you know. It's not doesn't suit the story, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I I might I think this is a four issue mini series. Uh, this one initially, right? I think is going to be one. I'm sure yeah. it's been out into her own ongoing. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much probably going to buy them all because I got the oh. first two already in the secret spoiler, and it wasn't bad. Well, I'm gonna yeah, I'll probably continue to read this with you honestly now after reading this because I wasn't going to check this out, but then like. Uh, you know, she is a mutant now, which kind of interested me. And then well, also the fact that you said you had pre-ordered it. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll check this out. And it wasn't that bad, actually. I, I liked it. So what'd you give this out of five? I'll give it a 3.5. Oh, you know what? I maybe even give it a 3.75, a little bit over, over you. Yeah, I, I, I like the character. So I hope hopefully this is, if this is going to serve as a jumping on point for some folks, um, I think you can, you can check this out and not have a problem with it. Honestly, like I think it kind of, it kind of brings you up to date, I think, on most things, this issue. So I think it serves as a good uh, introduction as well. I mean, there's a lot that's gone on with her. But they also mentioned the fact, hey, I used to be a, an Avenger in this. Hey, uh, I, you know, I'm an X-Men now. Like, I, you know, there's the whole family stuff in there. She died and came back. Like, they kind of touch on everything that's really kind of happened or really, like, big moments, I think, in this, like, in the in the in in this issue. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, now. So if I have a choice between this and Exterminators 2, I'd go for Exterminators 2. Exterminators 2? The one that Carlos Gomez did before, oh, the Exterminator. Oh, of course. Cool. Cool. This guy's got, you know, what, 
one comic to work on. I'd rather uh, work on a, a sequel to that. Of course, of course. No, I agree. Also, the other artist on that was actually, it was two artists, Adam Gorham, too, which, who I'm a fan. Yeah. So they had both two good artists on there. Local Man Gold, number one. Chris, you picked this up, too, right? We did pick this one up. I, well, actually, I didn't grab the issue. I had this digitally, but. Yeah. Couldn't find it there. Unfortunately, I don't get all these references. I, you know, when I did pick this up, the guy at the, my LCS goes, oh, that's a reference to, I guess. I don't know some some homage to a comic book cover. Death me. I'm not. Death. Yeah, that I'm not aware of. But uh, it, was, it was a crossover between Image and Valiant. I think originally. I think it's Valiant. I think it's. Yeah, it's. It, it, he's right. This is an homage cover to basically like they, they had those those. Um, there was a crossover between Image and another small publisher. I think it was Valiant yeah. back in the day. And that's what they called it. Like there was the gold ones, there was the black one, there was red or whatever. Like they had different kind of colors. Like and and it was basically uh so that's why they are homaging in this because again, '90s comics, right? So yeah. like, kind of local man. That's what they try to do. So what what do you think of this? Well, once again, these are comics. I don't go. Uh, I go in with uh, no expectation of how the story's gonna go. You know, I did like the local man, the first six, but I thought that might just have been a you know a good arc. But coming into this year, I thought it was pretty good too. You know, you got the you got Cross Jack or whatever his name is meeting his younger self, and you know they both hate each other. I thought that was a good dynamic between them. Yeah. Then you have that whole the whole team from the '90s show up, and you know, and they're all still you know basically right out of the '90s. So that was fun to see. And you know, the story kind of got a little bit lost on me when uh, uh, what's that? Uh, I don't know, near the end there, there's some almost kind of another uh, multiversal sort of thing going on. But then when I did finish reading the comic, go through the other stuff there, there's a whole bunch of different characters that are sort of brought in here, like that uh, girl that they have to use to reset time. That's part of that love everlasting. I think you started reading that a while ago. Yeah, I got the reference, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I go, oh, yeah, that's her. Okay, that makes sense. So this is almost was like a, a crossover of different publishers, yeah. too. Image characters, no image yeah. characters. Oh, they're all right. okay, all image characters. But yeah, yeah. so it, it, it kind of made the comic even better. So I did really like this comic. I had a lot of fun with this one. Like I'm a big fan of the Street Angel character that's in this too by Jim Rugg. Like I really like her. She's a skateboarding ninja assassin girl who's like a kid. She he he writes uh, and draws this series called Street Angel through Image as well. Um, and so, yeah, I got a lot of the references with some of the characters in there. There was like a spawn character. I guess that's not one of the main guys in this, which was this dude here, which I, I had to look at. Like you said, there's bios in the back to kind of explain yeah. this booth guy, which is pretty awesome. And then you got uh, Dynamo 5 I was familiar with because Mahmoud Asrar, an artist I really like. I've talked about on the show here before. He used to draw that book. Fire Breather by Phil Hester I'm familiar with, but I've never read it. And then you got Striker, who I think is a young blood guy or something, right? So, like, yeah. it was... Yeah, it was it was it was really fun. I, I actually quite liked this. I think it worked in the sense uh it was fun because like the local man guy was just like, Oh, it's it's me from my past or something. You know what I mean? Because he like lives yeah, in God, I'm fucking such an ass. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in a world where this kind of stuff happens, but it's just like they're referencing it from a a, a, a sense of like this is a actual you know, like it's not like a comic in the sense like they live in this world and they're used to this kind of shit. Like this is a very grounded in reality type of like uh, normal type of story that they're telling in Local Man. But yet the superheroes do exist. So like just the, the approach they took with these like, oh, yeah, this happens sometimes. Like, I don't know. I just really liked that. I liked it. Like because like you think Local Man's like a very grounded type of story. And then this kind of shit happens sometimes. Yeah. Right? It's, it's pretty cool. I, I do like it. And I think it worked well. Uh, not only as a uh, one shot issue to kind of do this kind of fun thing, but also I think in the grand scheme of things of the local man storyline, because they even like they even tied in the whole thing with his Uber driver, Chris. You know how was that whole thing with his Uber driver always in the series? And yeah. this oh, one, they got a guy at the truck. Yeah, they stole the they stole the guy's car in this one, right? <laughs> he ran up quite the bill. And then here, this great splash page here um later on in the issue these are all all image characters like this guy right here that looks like the pope superhero that's battle pope that's a robert kirkman fucking character that he came yeah. up with back in the day and uh like and there, there's some other people here that's copra like again if you know these characters there's chew there's uh, there's a bunch of different characters from different image titles in the background there but if you don't know them it's fine it still works but if you do know yeah. them, it's it's fun the easter eggs right so it gives you a little extra 
a little extra something. So, yeah, I, I had fun with this one. Yeah, I think it was good. What did you give this? Yeah, I give this a four. No problem. I thought it was a good one. Yeah, same. Four out of five this week. All right, next up, Incredible Hulk number three, Chris. Yeah, well, we'll see how this one goes. This one might be on the chopping block. But I do like the way they portray the Hulk there. You know, he's not just mindless. He does speak in this one here a little bit. You know, he can figure out what's going on. He doesn't seem to like that little girl there that's uh, following him. Art, though, is incredible. Can't go wrong with that. They make Hulk look freaking like a monster. But where he's fighting that stupid monster at the end, I don't even know how he's beating him. I don't know where he's hitting him with or whatever. They just seem collapse at the end. And... Uh, but the, the cliffhanger to the story, I guess, does have me uh, looking forward to the next one. Yeah, man thing. Yeah. yeah. I I don't love this book, but I love the art on this book. And I don't know if it's just because I don't feel like the horror take on the Hulk is really working. I don't think it's that because Immortal Hulk prior to this had some horror themes shit going on in it. Like it was like a body horror type of book. And I, I really enjoyed that. But I'm not, I, I think we got to get away from this whole swamp fucking people type story that they yeah. had going this first arc, which seems to only be three issues. Although, man, thing is kind of swamp. Maybe it's kind of still like in the bayou. Type yeah, of there's stuff. bayou. Yeah, but I want him out of the bayou, you know, running into some people here. I want to see uh, Nick Klein drawing some other superheroes with Hulk, you know, and see how see his take on them too. I think that'd be. That'd be something to, to look forward to, but there's nothing like that's happening, or, yeah. or at least in the books yet. Yeah, Nick Klein is the thing I think is that's the best thing about this book so far. Yeah. The story is just kind of, you know, I'm not too invested in the storyline so far, although I haven't been picking up the issues. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, we'll see what happens this second half. You know what I mean? Like a, of the first, like, five, six issues, like, first our story arc here because, uh, you know, it will dip. It, it, it depends. Like, if I really like the next couple of issues, I might pick up the trade. But so far, despite the nice artwork, the story isn't really that engaging to me. So yeah. What'd you give this? Yeah. I give it a, yeah, 3.5. I was going to give it lower, but uh, that Nick Klein, he, he pumps it up. Yeah. I was going to give it a 3.25, but yeah, Nick Klein's really fucking good. He's killing it on this book, but that's the only reason I, the story is not that interesting. Uh, next up, Ultimate Invasion number three by uh, Hickman and uh, what Brian Hitch, I think the artist on this, yeah, yeah. The cover here too. Okay, you got that cover. Nice. I got that. Yeah, there's the a cover here. I have the Daniel Acuna variant. What do you think of this? I know if this is like, is this the only four issues? This Ultimate Invasion, four issues in an oversized like, um, like Omega or something by him, yeah. Uh, they waste a lot of time in this issue uh, figuring out what's going on. It's a very just kind of world-building issue where they're, you know, I guess the big reveal is that there's a, you know, each of the, I don't know, territories or countries, whatever you want to call it, they're all sort of ruled by these heroes. And basically they're all just kind of in cahoots, you know, trying to keep the masses occupied while they do whatever they want to do. And I guess Obadiah Stain... He was part of it. Now that he died, they have to bring in Howard Stark into the circle to let him know what's going on. And we'll see what happens there. I don't know. You know, I guess that the big thing the, with the reveal of Kang at the end. Yeah. It's still, a good, it's still an interesting story. I'll give it that much. Uh, but, you know, I figured this, this needs more legs to it or the freaking next issue is going to be freaking blowing your socks off, which isn't you, bad either. Yeah. No, you... you... I agree with you 100%. That's what I was going to say about this issue is that we only got one more issue to go in the main miniseries and then like an end cap that's supposed to supposed to set up the the reintroduction of the ultimate universe and I feel like I don't think he's really uh, accomplishing that so far by telling yeah. his story. It's not that the story's bad, but it's just so like the scope of it is just him telling a story when like, this is supposed to be, this was supposed to be, I feel like promised as the reintroduction of the ultimate universe. Yeah, you want to see all these new versions of all these new heroes, but you don't. Yeah. So I won't get freaking taken off the board. No, nobody put back on. Listen, I, he, he still has, to do here. he might, yeah, he might, which is like a, a version of him. That's, I guess, um, what's his name? Reed Richards. He says here, but, or he's just trying to lie to him and say that it's real. Yeah, because isn't isn't the maker Reed Richards already? 
essentially. Well, it's that's base. He's basically Doctor Doom. He's not Doctor Doom, but and that's the thing too. Like I haven't read all the Ultimate Universe stuff, so I feel like Kickman is commenting somewhat in this, also on previous Ultimate Universe stuff, which I'm not up to date on. Like I haven't read all the Ultimate Universe stuff. I've read some of his Ultimate Universe stuff. I've read ultimate spider-man stuff but like i i don't know it, there might be stuff we're missing here i i yeah. don't um you know I, that's the thing i wouldn't say i'm confused i'm just I, I i don't understand the reasoning behind the story he's telling or why he's focusing on this stuff but in in, in and of itself it's not a bad story he's telling but it's just like you're you know i think i bought in on the promise that this is something other than what we're being given right so like yeah. i don't know yeah we'll see I mean, he's still got two issues to go. He's got the last issue of this miniseries and, like I said, an oversized kind of end cap to this whole thing. But I don't know. I, he's got his work cut out for him if that's what it's going to be. Either it's going to be that or it's just going to be a well-told story about something in the Ultimate timeline, right? I don't yeah. know. It's not bad. I think it's just it's, – I wish it was better, though, in my opinion. But, like, what, yeah. what what'd you give this? I, I don't want to – I. Uh, I'll give it a three point five as well. It's been a very, it's a very mid mid week, let's say. It is, it is, and uh, yeah, I gotta agree with you. I was almost gonna give it three point seven five, but if I'm being honest, yeah, I thought I was thinking the same thing. I go, I gotta lock it down though, because like you said, it was just nothing happened. You know, okay, yeah, big we have one big reveal in there. Yeah, the world is being controlled. Okay, fine. Yeah, you don't need a whole issue to talk about that. All right, World Tree number five. Uh, this issue came out this week. What do you think of this? Yeah, I've been reading this one online, and uh, this one's this one was good. They were freaking, uh, weren't they jumping around in time? They you're up in 2050 or something. You see what happened to the world. 2049. And, yeah, 2049, and then I guess one of the guys of the group is still survived, and then uh, you go back to the regular time, and they, you know, you get a little bit of a uh, history of what's happening and who's who, and it looks like shit start hitting the fan. You know, everybody's getting triggered or. You know, being uh, subverted by the the internet and uh, start killing people. So they got to pull the plug, and they do, and we'll see where things go. Yeah, that was my interesting takeaway from this issue was, like, I think, yeah, he's really leaning into and commenting a lot more on the aspect of the internet in the future, or maybe even AI for all we know in this when I didn't know if that's where he was going to go with it at first, because like, obviously this is a horror book or like, you know, like a weird sci-fi horror book, but, yeah. and as the story has been unfolding, we haven't really been given that much information, but in this issue, which I think probably is the end of the first arc, because the way it ended, it was just like, Oh, okay. This is where we're going with this. Right. This was, this was definitely, needed i think like this was like a make or break issue for me to maybe even continue with this series and i think this was a really solid fucking issue where he where he kind of did open up the doors and be like yeah this is possibly a future that these guys are going to get to if they don't do something about this and and uh and yeah the main character basically cre created the underweb in this issue gets fucking killed in this issue by his sister who apparently is the woman that's been walking around the naked one that's been killing everybody yeah. that i guess has been it, that's part of this uh underweb like fucking area or whatever but it looks like you can access it it looks like that guy in 2049 in the future setting that they showed us at the start of the issue was actually, like you said, like a, a live in there. Like that is the future that we know, like in this book, like, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where this is going now, but I think he's definitely I think he's tapping into maybe everyone's kind of, you know, it, it, de it definitely makes me think of everybody's talks recently about the future of AI and yeah. Uh, obviously the internet and all this kind of shit right so it's 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 very interesting actually yeah he's upping the stakes in the story it's no more just you know these group of friends trying to stop some you know psycho serial killer yeah like this has gone worldwide yeah 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 very interesting uh and then yeah at the end here it kind of shows you the future again and he says yeah the, the truth is on worldtree.net like so basically hinting at like and now that the creator of it has died i don't know what this group is really gonna do but I think now they have like a big task ahead of them, like to try to prevent this yeah. possible future, right? Or it's already happened, and it, this is him just telling. Yeah, they're just yeah trying to survive the new uh, the new reality. Right. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So I look forward to more. Uh, what'd you give this? No, I gave it three point seven five. That was good. Yeah, I'll give it a. I'll give it a. I'll give it a four. Actually, I was probably gonna give it the same rating you did, but talking about it, I was like, yeah, it was pretty solid. 
Uh, then we got Wolverine 36 this week, Chris. This is another issue between the crossover of uh, Ghost Rider and Wolverine. I think the the last one is the next issue, which is the Omega type issue. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's a cover, though. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, you know, some good, some fun, fun stuff in here with Wolverine trying to ride backseat to uh, to Ghost Rider and melting his, getting his face melted off. Thought that was fun. And then I guess. I don't know, more of this stuff with this story. You know, they have that kid feeding on old people with Alzheimer's or something. And then, uh, and where do they go? Their department is like Weapon H or I don't know where they're going with this or where they, yeah. is it Department H or Weapon H? And I don't know how they end up getting those stupid helmets on their heads, but they do. And uh, things go crazy, I guess. I think this is actually my favorite issue of the crossover so far. Uh, honestly, I, I did like some of the, uh, well, I think this whole one takes all this. This one takes all place in the present. There's no uh, backtracking of the little kid or anything like that. Right, which helped. Um, I just think like the moments that happen in this issue, as opposed to the others, the rest of the story so far, like he saved the best for last, almost like in terms yeah. of like you know there was this whole moment where um, the guy, the government aid that Wolverine has that use that he uses in in in, in his book to help him out with stuff, he. He has all these like, you know, bugs and shit flying out of his mouth. And then you had, like you said, the old switcheroo and the whole Weapon X kind of setting or Weapon H or whatever with the whole with uh, Wolverine and uh, Ghost Rider. And by the end of it, you get like a, an amalgamation of a uh, Ghost Rider Wolverine, which is very interesting where that, where, you know, whatever he's going to do at the end of this series. Yeah, it looks like he's there to hunt down mutants for whatever reason, but. Helverine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cool picture, though. It is, yeah. I think they're wasting this character on a, you know, on a so-so story, but it's cool <laughs> to see. Hey, you know what though? I gotta, I gotta give it up to him. It's one more issue, and we're done. Like it, it is. Yeah, well, yeah. It, the it, problem is, this is gonna be a Ghost Rider issue that I'm not buying. I, yeah, I don't read it. I'd rather, I'd rather them take these half baked ideas and fucking be like, hey, it's a three issue thing, you know? Yeah. Whatever. Not, not a fucking. Yeah, I'm gonna wait half a year on this. Not that we don't need a fucking like six month fucking cross. Yeah, history of the little boy growing into a man and eating people or yeah. doing what he does for this to happen. So yeah, good on them for that. Yeah, absolutely. So what'd you give this? Three point five. Well, yeah, three point five. It was saved by the cover and by the Halverine. I got to give it a three point seven five because I think it is the best issue of the crossover so far, which I think I gave the other ones lower. So I'm just putting that in perspective for myself. So. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last but <laughs> last and least, Chris, do you want to talk about uh, North Swimsuit Edition? Here? Yeah, I got hosed on this one. Be I sure. think, I'm, I think there might have been a spoiler warning in the last one in, the, in our last episode. At least show off a, a cover here, <laughs> a nice cover. I'm gonna find out where it was. And that's the worst part of it is that you know, I bought this because they had the, the, the J. Scott Campbell cover. Ooh. Yeah, of course. I just got the A cover, which is freaking garbage. Oh my god, what happened? I don't know. Hey, what am I? On? I want to throw that back at my LCS. Be like, I don't want that. <laughs> You're too nice. Fucking brutal. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I bought this. You know, this reminded me of the the, the Marvel swimsuit illustrator that I bought like freaking back in the '80s, and that was a fun issue. You know, you had freaking awesome art in there. It was all original pictures, yeah. original drawings. You know, you had stories in there. It was supposed to be like a swimsuit or a Sports Illustrated magazine, you know, that articles written, you know, like there'd be interviews with Thor. Oh, how do you how do you lift so much? You know, just dumb fun stuff. So I thought, you know, hey, maybe you know, uh, DC's trying to recreate something out of here with this one. Yeah, not even it's it was just you know a a cover a cover magazine. You know, and I have half the covers that are in there already, anyways, because they're all cheesecakey ones. It was nice to see some of the covers. Uh, you know, they were on a double spread where you know, I think the covers I have were just over the. You know the single page, uh, the stories. I didn't even bother reading them. Yeah, no, and I don't know. This probably was like ten bucks too. I don't know. It seems to be oversized, brutal. I'm with That's you. Brutal. I I read that Marvel one back in the day. Um, you know, or I guess more re more in recent years. But that was a fun thing that they did, though. This was fucking terrible. 
they basically put a bunch of like, like you said, the cheesecakey covers that they've been doing over the last couple of years in here is basically reprints. They put a reprint story between Midnighter here at the end of the issue, which I found out was a reprint after the fact while I'm reading the credits of this issue and uh, from 2020 from another fucking special that they did. And, and the one, the one story that they put in here with the fucking naked penguin there and the, <laughs> the girls of the DC universe was not even that great. Honestly, this is, and for the price tag and the fact that they tried to sell this as something that it wasn't, this is one of the worst things I've fucking checked out in a long, long fucking time. Guys, do not fucking fall for this one. Run away as far as you can for this. Yeah, I fell for it because, you know, the solicitation, I, I didn't buy anything out of DC this month. Oh, might as well. What the hell? I'll take a flyer on this, uh, this swimsuit illustration or this uh, swimsuit edition. Maybe it'll be fun. Yeah. You know why, though? They put this out on, like, the fifth week with that fucking Omega-type Night Terror fucking... They, they had nothing else to offer because they had all Night Terror things during these two months. So they put out this fucking bullshit and tried to sell it as something it was not. And and, I, and I'm and i not, you know, I'm, I'm not against you in the sense that you, you would have seen that and been like, oh, yeah, maybe that'll be a fun one-off type thing with the Swimsuit Edition title. Yeah. I you know, Even I was interested to check it out, but, like, I didn't pick it up, but... But the fact of the matter is, I read this because I knew you were going to check it out. And this was this was not even that much comics in here. It was mostly like the covers, which they yeah. don't fucking have put out, I think, as a collection, like a cover collection. I already yeah, like at least the other ones that have like I don't know, they had a poison ivy. I think this week they had a cat woman like with the covers exposed. Yeah. At least you know what it is when you're buying it, okay? You're gonna get all the yeah. you know, get, get some photos of all the varying covers that you might have missed, or you know, something you might want to see up, you know, yeah, in but print, but how pissed off would somebody be if they had the special that that other fucking half of the issue of that story that's in there, the Midnighter one, was already previously printed in something else, and you're picking this up? Yeah. Like, you're fucking pissed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, and that's not without being like, those stories are not good in this issue either. But, like, I mean, uh, uh, forget that. But, like, even that, like, e even picking up the issue and paying this price and getting a fucking bunch of reprinted covers and a reprint of a story and getting maybe like what, like 12 pages of another fucking story, or whatever that first yeah. one was, this is a ripoff, first of all. Like, you know, what I mean? on top of everything else, it's bad and it's like a fucking blatant fucking ripoff. Like, how much was the price tag on this one? I don't even want to look at <laughs> I imagine it's what five ninety nine. So what in Canada? That's freaking thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. I'm a, here. A low rating is coming. By the way, <laughs> here we go. What do you want to give this out of five? Give this one out of five. Yeah, that's an easy two. One point five. I, I was going to give it no rating personally, but uh, one point five out of five. No, one point five out of five. Let's give it our lowest rating of the year. Hey, when we do the the comic shop talk awards out there, guys, I think <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's in contention. <laughs> I, mean, I hope nothing beats it because that's. I'm writing it down right now. North swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> swimsuit worst issue of the year we do have an award for that don't forget all right guys wow. so uh you know that's all we're going to talk about today that's all the comics that we read this week uh let's talk about what we're going to be looking at next week what are you looking at next week there chris the list over here just give me a second okay so for marvel i think i got fantastic four 14 is for uh I think there's a torch cover that I liked. Uh, I got Immortal X Men 15, Amazing Spider Man 33, X Men 26, I think Batman 137. See what's going on in that world. I have no idea. I forgot where, where they left off there. Birds of Prey 1, which I'm sort of low key uh, starting to dig there, you know, from the solicitations. Same. And I think Sacrifices 2 is coming out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I I mean, it's funny because I was looking over my next few weeks because I can look ahead on the app of like what's coming out in my in my pull list, and uh, like <laughs> if my my weeks have gone from like four or five issues to like eight, nine, ten, like before because of all the yeah. DC coming back, right? <laughs> it's, it's funny. Yeah, I might have to put some things on the cut list. Oh, really? Already again? Eh? Yeah. Um, what do I got here? So next week, yeah, Batman one thirty seven. Uh, Birds of Prey number one, which I'm also very much looking forward to. I'm looking forward to that one. Peacemaker tries hard number five. Oh, yeah, I'm looking to read that for sure. Uh, Amazing Spider Man 33, Doctor Strange 7, 
Immortal X-Men 15. I'm also looking forward to the X-Men stuff and Spider-Man as always. And yeah, Sacrificers 2, very interesting first issue. And fucking, of course, X-Men 26. Yeah, some good week, actually. Looks like it's going to be a good week. So yeah, let's hope for that. And let me just, I'm just looking over the solicits here very quickly to see if there's anything digitally I might be checking out next week. Uh, let me just see here. Yeah, Birds of Prey I mentioned. No, no, no. Let's see here. I don't think I, I don't think anything else from DC. Oh, Shazam number three. I'll probably read digitally. That comes out next week. Or although, like Chris said, I don't know where we left off with any of these books. Poison Ivy. You're gonna be checking that out. You still with that or no? Yeah, I think I'm gonna be out there unless they start uh, getting some kick-ass covers again. Uh, let me see here. What else we got? Going over to Marvel. Uh, maybe some Marvel stuff I might be reading digitally. Uh, oh, maybe Fantastic Four. Oh, of course, Ghost Rider Wolverine, the Omega issue oh. that we talked about. Yeah. Uh, I think that might be it, though. You know what? Something I might want to revisit and trade or something that I've been hearing actually really good things about after we read the I feel like the first couple of issues uh, th that Scarlet Witch series. Apparently, a lot of people are really liking that one. So I didn't want to. Well, yeah, I don't know. I might have to reach check it out or something, either digitally or in trade, because uh, a lot of people are saying a lot of good things about that one now. I've I've been hearing so uh, maybe it got really better, much better after the first couple. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's that's it in terms of even like digital reads. Not too much to speak of here. So yeah, that'll be for next week. All right, Chris, favorite book of the week. It has to be Nord's not. <laughs> North swimsuit edition. <laughs> I'm gonna go with local man gold. I figured that was that was uh yeah that was that was one of the picks that probably was gonna be my favorite of the week. But ultimately, I think I'm gonna go with Arcade Kings four. Yeah, nice. I, this was a uh, this the events that happened in this issue. While hard to explain, kind of get everyone caught up while explaining it earlier. Uh, it, it, it was a long time coming in this mini mini series, so I think it kind of was uh, a, an enjoyable issue in that sense. But yeah, I think it was. But yeah, it was a very midweek, like you said. Uh, it was between this local man gold for me, and uh, even uh, Batman Catwoman Gotham War for me this week. Yeah. It's it wasn't it wasn't a uh, you know it wasn't like the the last episode, let's say, where we just we had like maybe several things we could have picked. Right, yeah, there's this a lot of good stuff last week for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, it looks like a great week next week. So make sure to tune in uh, for that one. Uh, as always, uh, we, you know, follow us on Instagram to be up to date on when these episodes do come out. Sometimes the schedule is a little sporadic with when we can get together to do this, but always a fun time. And Chris, thank you as always. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Cheers.